to come this day to you. Thank you for the gift of life and the gift of your holy word. Lord, feed us till we want no more. Grant us understanding of your word. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today we lesson five of um, the uh, teaching, ongoing teaching on um, the ministry of suffering. Yesterday's teaching, we ended with what Paul told the uh, uh, Hebrews in Hebrews 13, 22, and I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation. For I have written a little unto you, unto a few words. You know, he says, suffer the word of exhortation. The times the word may come, and it's not exactly what you expect, or it pierces you through. Remember, the word is sharp and quick like a two-edged sword. When the word comes forth, your reaction to the word will dictate what is inside of you. There are some people, when the word comes forth, they embrace it like yesterday morning. Out of the blue, somebody we have never communicated with for years, right the word was going on, was touched enough to seek help. And Pastor Grace Arrange, immediately after the word, we had a very beautiful conversation. That beautiful conversation has created value for this vessel. And this vessel is grateful to the Lord for it immediately. On the other hand, the word can come. And some people may be lashing out and angry and offended with the word. That's the nature of the word. It's sharp. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. When the word comes, if you are open to the word, the ministry of the word will take place in you. If you if you push back against the word, the Lord will not strive with you. And that's how the ministry of suffering happens. Part of it is the Lord wants to deliver his people. And from the day we are born again, I don't know about you. Some of you grew up in church where all your life you knew no sin. But you see, people like us, we grew up in the world. We grew up in the world. We grew up in the world. We, we didn't come to the Lord until we're 30 plus. So we have seen the world. We have seen everything the world has to offer. We have seen the filthiness of the world. And even when we came to the Lord and we thought it was ended, we're now in heaven, we had to go through process. The Lord had to deal with issues in our life. The Lord had to deal with stuff. How did he do it? The word. The word. The word will come like this. You don't know what to do. The word will pierce you through in a very discomforting part. And brothers and sisters, if there is anything that you seem to enjoy today in Pastor Grace and I, is the fruit of the ministry of the word and the suffering that had to go with the flesh having to give up its desires, what it wanted. And so I want to say this to you, men and brethren. A lot of people cannot take suffering, especially if you have somehow uh, imbibed the doctrine of the new plastic cross. The new plastic cross is opposite of the Oroge cross, just as the Oroge cross is a place you are invited to come and die to self. And then your empty vessel becomes the vessel the Lord uses to express himself by his spirit. The new plastic cross asks you to keep what Yeshua said, give up. You keep your ambition. You keep your desire. You keep the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. And the result is no suffering. You keep accumulating those things only for one day to discover that eternity has started, either by death or the rapture. And brothers and sisters, that reminds me, why would any preacher what they sold, why would any teacher what they sold take away issues like heaven and hell Issues like eternal destination of the righteous and eternal destination of the wicked. Why would any preacher take it away if it is not a satanic plot that today in the larger wing of the Christian church nobody talks about hell. Oh, don't make them feel bad. Oh, don't make people feel offended. Oh, no, 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 no. They have enough trouble. And more. No, no, don't let them. You see, if you can take the suffering of allowing the world to convict you today, then you have opted for the Broadway Christianity. And listen to this. Matthew 7, not Apostle George said, no preacher said, Yeshua himself said, Matthew 7, broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many, 
the day that walk on it. And so I want to say this to you. If you come to a place and look at the significant thing, if you come to a place like this program, Facebook Live, and the audio version called The Daybreak with the King, listen to this. The way the Lord brought you is because the Lord knows there are things in you that he wants to deal with. And I want to say this to you. Don't ever think Pastor Grace and I have arrived. We are student number one in the master class. We are student number one in the global school of ministry. So when the Lord releases the word, we take it in first. We pray it in first. We ask the Lord, is there anything in me that does not conform to your expectation, your plans? Lord, I pray, I give you right away. Whatever it is, take it out. Whatever it is. And that approach has helped us that we are first partakers of the word. For the husband man who labors is ordained to be first partaker of it. And so having said that, I want to say this to you. Paul said to them again in Hebrews 13, 20, I beseech you, brethren, suffer the word of exhortation. Tolerate it. Allow the word of exhortation. I know you may have been hearing all God will do for you. God will do for you. That's all you've heard. Praise the Lord. Now in this place, the Lord says the whole world for the whole world. And if you think that it would be an easy thing for Pastor Grace and I to sit here and share and allow our vessels to be used by the Lord, then you must have missed it entirely. It's not easy to be used by the Lord to know that there'll be people out there carrying stones to stone. There'll be people out there who will have sharp teeth like sharp teeth like 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 iron to eat up but you know what we are not intimidated <laughs> we are not intimidated it has pleased the lord to give us the grace like he told jeremiah in jeremiah chapter 1 men and brethren he said fear not he said, before we, you know, listen, this, this person you are seeing here, you are talking to her, you are talking about a showbiz impresario who spent all his days in vanity of flesh and all that before the Lord arrested dramatically on that day. And that day he arrested, he arrested, and then I realized this is a new life. And I'm going to go for it all. I don't want to go for a little bit. I want it all. And I want to encourage you if you're on this program, Make up your mind and say, Lord, bring it on. I just want to be with you in all eternity. This is what will make you to embrace the ministry of suffering when it comes your way. Oh, brothers and sisters, listen to this. I've seen, th I've seen things in this short life. Yes, just 63, but I've seen some things. On the way from Newark, New Jersey to London, the aircraft air conditioner packed up in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Pilot announced there was confusion everywhere. In the midst of all that, the pilot said, I'm going to go back to New Jersey. Half of the journey done already. You can imagine the tension. In the midst of that all, the Lord gave peace to this vessel. I said, Lord, glory be to your name. Even if this is the way you have determined that it end, praise the Lord. And all I want to ask you, Lord, is there anything that is undone? Is there anyone I've not forgiven? Is there anything that is lingering to my account, Lord? Just this moment I have, take it away. This happened before I prayed about the aircraft. Attitude, what the Lord wants to walk out of us through all we go through, is to come to a place where our attitude in the midst of suffering is not murmuring, is not complaining, is not, is not quarreling, is not lashing out, but our attitude is that of dependency on the Lord. You know, that day it happened from Newark, New Jersey to London. It enables me, having gone through that, enables me to go to the second one that involved an aircraft from Lagos, Nigeria, uh, from London to Lagos. And over the Sahara Desert, the aircraft was rocking badly, planes flying, they were serving food, uh, things flying, people screaming. And in the midst of all that, I found this calm. I didn't even know what was in me. Oh Lord, I bless you. And I submit to whatever you agree. I know you love me enough to, if this is the way you want it to end, praise the Lord. Just take care of my wife and the children. But after that, then, Lord, 
and now stood with all the peace of the Lord to take authority over the storm. And it abated. Now that one again enabled me to do the third one involving an aircraft from Harare, Zimbabwe, to Olivatambo, Johannesburg, to catch a flight. I was to land and in two hours to catch a flight back to London. And the, the rain and the thunder was so heavy, they couldn't land at Olivatambo. They diverted to Lanseria, a small airport very close to Johannesburg. And there we were on the tarmac about 45 minutes or so. Then the, the rain abated as we prayed. And as we were about to lift up, all the host of hell, it appeared, were trying to draw the plane down. Brothers and sisters, why I may give you this illustration. It is that, you see, if we go through rightly the things the Lord go, we go through, we're going to develop a confidence in the Lord. We're going to learn to rest in the Lord. We're not going to be wrestling and our flesh lashing out our flesh, our mouth complaining or our feet, our keyboard typing things on Facebook, you know, attacking people left, right, and center because of things the Lord wants to deal with in us. Have you said that, brothers and sisters? We continue our Bible survey and see whether we can end it today and then we go on tomorrow to the next dimension in the book of James chapter 5. The Lord spoke through James from verse 9. Grudge not against one another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the just standeth before the door. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Two things he brought forth there, the, you know, the, the, the suffering of the, the suffering and affliction and patience of the prophets of old. You know, Jerusalem was a killing field of the prophets of old. They suffered. They suffered persecution. They suffered rejection. They suffered the things people are groaning today, mourning about today was standard fare for them. And then he tells about Job. Rest and remember Job. Job was patient. Men and brethren, even when he seemed to stumble, the Lord enabled him to come back on track. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is pitiful and tender of mercy. Whatever you are going through, it will not destroy you. Whatever you are going through, the Lord is going to work out his grace through it. And then let's go on to Peter. Peter, the one who witnessed the sufferings of Yeshua. Peter was able to write a few things about suffering. Apart from Paul, Peter wrote the next largest tome on suffering. Let's see what he said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. On which salvation the prophets have inquired and sat diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Yeshua, which was in them, did signify when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Yeshua and the glory that should be revealed. The sufferings of Yeshua and the glory that should be followed. Men and brethren, if you remember that suffering is not fatal, suffering is not a dead end, suffering is a pathway to glorification. Don't forget this principle. Whatever the Lord allows you to go through, it is not what you go through that's the issue. It is the end product of the Lord. The end product of suffering is glorification. The end product of suffering is exaltation. The end product of suffering is perfection. The draws in us, most of the time, it is what we go through that will take it away. Ordinarily, they won't go away. At times, we tend to forget our need of the Lord, especially if the Lord has blessed us with something, maybe prominence or money or assets or all that. You know, everything may seem like nothing. And you, when you hear about other people going through, it's like nothing to you. Then suddenly, it hits you. Something happens to you. Something that is so deep and so intense, you find yourself go to your knees. All along, you are praying the kindly type of prayer. Father, in the morning, good morning, Lord. Lord, thank you for the day. You are praying that all the day. Something hits you in your business, in your work, in one thing or the other. You find yourself, 4 a.m., you are up, traveling before the Lord, two hours before him, two hours, 40 minutes before him, because of what you went through. That thing has drawn you into the depth of the bosom of the Father. Men and brethren, 1 Peter 2.19, For this is thankworthy, 
if a man for conscience toward Elohim endure grief, suffering wrongfully. <laughs> he said, hey, if you suffer wrongfully, you endure it, then it's thankworthy. So how many of us are able to endure grief? We suffer something we ought not to suffer. We keep quiet. We give the Father glory. We just exalt his name in the midst of his suffering. Do you know the same tongue with which people complain and mock more? It's the same tongue with which you can praise him and worship him and give him all the glory in the midst of the affliction you are going through. It's a matter of choice. Do you choose to murmur, to gossip? Do you choose to lash out, to use to be offended? Or do you choose to use that same tongue to glorify the Lord? One emanates from the soul, which is agitated when things are inconvenient. The other emanates from the spirit man. And that's why the Lord wants us to be spiritual people, not soulish people. Soulish people can handle suffering. Soulish people cannot handle pain. Soulish people have a way of just being victims. They all what they do, they stay in a state of arrested babyhood syndrome because of their victim victimhood mentality. Victimhood mentality will make you a babe even when you are old. Fifty years old, a babe. 55 years old, a babe. 60 years old, a babe. Because your attitude is so in arrested babyhood syndrome. And the Lord wants us to grow up. The Lord wants us to be spiritual. When you are spiritual, you are able to process things that happen through the lens of the Spirit, through the mind of the Father. You are looking at Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, that will be done in all situations. Men and brethren, so Peter then said in verse 2, to face Peter 2.20, For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your falls, you shall take it patiently? But if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Elohim. This is a powerful principle. Some suffering people go through is not really suffering from an Elohim point of view. It's chastisement. They are being chastised for their sin. They are being chastised for their faults. They are being chastised for being busybody in other men's matters in terms of, you know, gossip, backbiting. They are being chastised because of what they do in the way they do it, the wrong things they do. They are being chastised for the wrong steps they take. People take wrong steps. And when they are chastised for it, they begin to complain and murmur. No, there's no profit. If you are chastised, it's a just recompense for what went good through. But men and brethren, he said in verse 21, For if we hear unto where ye called, First Peter 2, 21, because Yeshua also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. This is something the Lord wants to bring us to. Come to a place. People abuse you. People attack you. People do all kinds of things against you. You don't return it to them. You don't do fire for fire. What do you do? You commit yourself to him that judges righteously. This is a place the Lord wants to bring all of us. The remnant of Elohim. Hear this. The Lord wants to bring us to a place where we commit all things to him who judges righteously when we are going through. And we are not just asking him to go and deal with these people, judge them, fire them, all that. No, you commit it to him. Trust in the judgment of Elohim. Trust in the wisdom of Elohim. Because at times Elohim may allow people to be the instruments through which you are purged from your fleshly nature, from your dependence on yourself. Men and brethren, it's very important. So he told us again in verse 17. No, sorry. He told us again in 1 Peter 3, 14. But if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of your terror, neither be troubled. Verse 17. For it is better, if the will of Elohim be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. It is better if you did evil and suffer for it. There's no profit except you take it properly. And what is that properly? If you do wrong and suffer for it, what is the law require of you? It's called repentance. And in some cases, restitution. So you need to understand, whenever you do wrong and the Lord chastises you or for any reason, anything, your first, your very first response should be nothing more than 
Repentance. Repentance is taking a dive into the pool of the blood. When you take a dive into the pool of the blood, something awesome happens. Something wonderful happens. There is not just forgivers. There is something more. That thing more is two things. One is called justification. The Lord wipes away that sin and you stand before the Lord as one that never sinned before. Blessed are those who are justified. See, Satan tricked you over. Tripped you over. You committed a sin. You run and take a dive into the pool in penitence, asking God for mercy. When God forgives you, he doesn't stop there. He wipes your slate clean. It's not in his memory. It's not in any cupboard. It's not in any locker. It's as if you never seen in the first place. That's what the Lord does. And then secondly, he, uh, thirdly, he clothes you with his righteousness. Wow. You have right standing with the Father. Why would anybody commit sin of any thought? Why would anyone suffer chastisement of the Lord and, take, and refuse to take this simple deal? The Lord said, I don't care. Though your sins be as crimson, though they be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Brothers and sisters, let us develop the holy habit that before we even begin to pray for repentance, I mean for, for, for breakthrough or for deliverance, first and foremost, Lord, if I regard iniquity in my heart, I know you will not hear me. If I cover my sins as Proverbs 28, 13 says, I know you will not hear my prayer. Lord, I come to you before. I don't know the exact origin of this thing. I don't know where it's coming from, but Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. I come now to the throne of grace. I come by the way of the blood. Forgive me. Purge me. Purify me. If there's anything speaking against me, Lord, I give it up right now by repentance. Why would a Christian be so proud to do this thing? This thing that you do that will give you justification and clothe you with the righteousness of the Father and you have the strength to resist Satan. And he flee from you. Brothers, listen. Satan has done a terrible thing in the church. By taking away the need of repentance. Repentance is not only for sinners, sinners who are coming to the Lord. Repentance is a way of life of those in the Lord. When they stumble, you say, my little children, First John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua the righteous. He's a propitiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Brethren, don't miss this. If you miss everything, don't miss this. Whatever you are going through, it does not cost you anything to go by the way of the blood. One minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, seven minutes is over. The moment your heart is full of penitence and your tongue is full of repentance, words and confession, those you know, those you don't know, say, Holy Spirit, as David said in Psalm 139, verse 23, 24, search me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You ask Holy Spirit to help. You lose nothing. It blunts the power of Satan to exert any form of pain upon you. Because once you take a dive into the pool of the blood of repentance, you come out. You are justified. You come out. You are righteous before the Lord. You come out with the capacity to resist Satan. He flee from you. You come out with the capacity to bind every agent of darkness at work and they will obey you. Men and brethren, wisdom is profitable to direct. Brethren, he say, if it is the will of the Father, First Peter 3, 17, it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. For Yeshua, verse 18, also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that it might be used, that it might bring us to Elohim, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. First Peter chapter 4, verse 1, For as much then as Yeshua had suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. One of the things that suffering does is to lead us into the depth of the holiness of our Father. Because if you have this approach I've just described a few minutes ago, if you have that approach, you become to a heightened consciousness that you don't want to intermingle with sin. So that any time you go through, you are getting closer to the Father. You are pressing into the Father. You are pressing into the Father. Let me read it again. First Peter 4.1 For a much then, 
as he should have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind, for he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. First Peter 4 13, they rejoice inasmuch as he are partakers of Yeshua's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. When you are free of any condemnation, and you are just being a partaker of Yeshua's suffering. That is to say, you are suffering for his name's sake. You are suffering for righteousness. You are suffering for doing right. You know what? You say, hey, rejoice and be glad with exceeding joy. This thing you see today, people forget that Yeshua said, when they persecute you and speak evil against you falsely for his name's sake, in Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount, he said, rejoice and leap for joy. Men and brethren, let's receive the word of the Lord, the ministry of suffering. Satan may have done it. Chastisement may have done it. Our own faults and mistakes may have done it. Whichever way it does, if we embrace the right act, if we embrace the divine principle and have the right attitude, we'll comfort like gold. We'll comfort like silver refined on the fire. Fire doesn't destroy gold. Fire brings for the beauty in gold. Fire doesn't destroy silver. It brings for the beauty in silver. Fire doesn't destroy diamond. It is fire that brings for the glory of the diamond. Men and brethren, that's why the Lord now says, that is the positive part. And it is once again in Facebook at 415. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Four things. Let none suffer as a murderer. If you murder, the law will catch up with you. If you thief, the law will catch up with you. If you evildoer, the law will catch up with you. Busybody in our men's matter, you'll be law catch up with you. And men and brethren, that's what I would say to people. Listen, if you are part of the movement, whether it's Global School of Ministry or Masterclass or IMF, any aspect, the Global Missions Board, you have your life to live. That's true. But if you are part, if you say God, Elohim has led you, there are principles. There are spiritual principles that guard this community. There are do's and don'ts that guard this community. You need to know about them. You need to know about them. It is the Bible, the Holy Bible. We live by the Bible. So you cannot say you want to be part of it and you say, no, you don't want Bible. You want to listen to that preacher, that preacher, but the Bible is nothing to you. No, at that point, you are suffering for being a busybody because who brought you in? You come to redefine what the Lord has shown us the way to not just live, but the way to meet him in glory. And you come to be an Achan. Huh? You come to be an Achan that will cause the only defeat of, Jake, of Joshua at AI. No, brother. No, sister. Don't be an Achan. Don't be an Achan in your local assembly. Don't be an Achan. Be the one bringing sin into the assembly. Don't be the one. Who is the gossip, the backbiter, the one destabilizing the fellowship? The Bible says, mark them that cause division and avoid them. And then there are those who have to be disfellowship in a ministry. Brothers and sisters, this thing say, let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. First Peter 4, 16. Yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Elohim on his behalf. First Peter 4, 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of Elohim commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. In the midst of the suffering, can you believe that Elohim is faithful? Can you believe that Elohim is present? Can you believe that Elohim knows what you are going through? Can you believe that Elohim loves you enough? He will not allow you to go through what will destroy you. So whatever he allows to come your way, he has already measured it out and seen that there is strength in you to overcome. And he has released grace for you to overcome. And he has already, you know, mapped out the outcome in terms of your better life that will come out of that fire you go through. If it is so, he said, commit your life to him. When you are going to commit it to him as to a faithful creator. First Peter 5 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Yeshua, also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Peter began to say, I'm speaking from a practical point of view. I am part of it. I have been through it. Brothers and sisters say, I have been through it. 
Peter says, I have been through it. I witnessed the sufferings of Yeshua. I was right there. I know it. So when I'm speaking, I'm speaking to you. And that's why, men and brethren, there are two ways, two things I'll tell you, I'll share with you today to round up this. The first is Peter himself. He said in 1 Peter 5, verse 10, but the Elohim of all grace, take note, Elohim is the Elohim of all grace. Do you know the name of his throne? The name of his throne is the throne of grace. So the Elohim of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Yeshua, I want you to take note, the destination, the salvation he gave to us, the redemption he gave to us has a destination. That destination is called eternal glory by Yeshua. That he who brought us into the kingdom will keep us to the, into the fullness of the kingdom. After that you have suffered a while, what are you going through right now? The Lord says it's going to be for a while. It's not permanent. The Lord has not appointed that it is permanent. It's for a little while. It's for a short while. Suffering has an expiry date. Suffering is not perpetual. He has an expiry date. He's on assignment for a purpose. He's on assignment to bring forth the eternal glory. Whatever the Lord has allowed you to go through or what you are going through, is it in your job? They pass you over and give up qualified people the promotion. They kept you static for three years in a particular place. Oh, because you preach the truth and the supervisor saw you, they benched you in a corner. Or oh, in your school, they say, well, because you say you're a Christian, we'll see, let God come and deliver you. You got a grade that is supposed to be 70, they give you 68. You get 80, they give you 72. All kinds of stuff. Listen, suffering has an expiry date. The fire you are going through today is not going to be forever. The expiry date is close. He says, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect, number one. The suffering, the Lord has appointed that no matter the plan of Satan, no matter the plan of man, if you embrace the ministry of suffering and have the right attitude in your soul, the right attitude in with your tongue, instead of complaining, murmuring, backbiting, lashing out, going to Facebook to begin to write all kinds of stuff, you complain against the, what the Lord is trying to get your attention because sometimes he's trying to gain your attention on what you never considered. You say he will make you perfect if you, through what you are going through. Number two, he will establish you in him. He'll bring you to a place of stability that will make you, like I've told you three times, aircraft. I didn't tell you about armed robber. Broke into a house in the city of Uwere. He must take Nigeria, Ebenezer court. My wife and I, Pastor Grace, she was pregnant then. And robbers broke through and pointed their guns at us. We just lay on the floor as they commanded us. They saw Bibles away for distribution to churches. They said, hey, what this is we can you can take as many as you want. They rifled through, so it was Bible. They went to the office. The building in front was the office. Rifle through the drawer. Do you know that the bunch of money that they, that they probably were looking for fell off? They didn't see it right there. But what was the grace? That me and Pastor Grace could be calm as we lay there and even held hands and prayed for them as they left to the other room and said, Lord, whatever they took from this house, we saw it as a seed into their salvation. This Bible and whatever they get in the office, we saw it as a seed. Brothers and sisters, what do you go through? If you go through it properly, the Lord will use it to establish you. A lot of Christians are like flow some and jet some. They are just playing with the wind. They are playing with the wind. They are playing with the wind. They see that new fashion. They want it. They see that one. They want it. They are playing with the wind. The Lord says, I want to establish you. I want to make you solid. I want to make you have this solid nature, solid character in the Lord. And brothers and sisters, he say, after you have suffered a while, he make you perfect. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. I didn't you. catch that. Could you try he again? He will settle you. 
He will perfect you, establish you, strengthen, settle you. Four things, four outcomes of suffering. Establish, strengthen, I mean perfect, establish, strengthen, settle. Settle you mean that he will give you your portion in the land of the living. He will give you your portion in planet Earth. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what you go through. Uh, you know, men and brethren, listen. You know, I told you, it doesn't matter what financial, economic, social, whatever you are going through. I told you about Pastor Grace and I how we went through a situation where those we minister to don't remember we are human beings. And yet the Lord asks us to minister to them wholly, completely, no charge. And pastors will come and reproach us, say, you, okay, let's see the day you're going to, let's see when you beg for bread. He said, the Lord tell you not to charge. And then the people will come year in, year out. They don't remember, even people, all that. Have we lacked? Do you know that some of the greatest things in our life, the Lord will just from nowhere, he raised one vessel to do one extraordinary thing in our life? Why? Because through what we went through, in this town, our children went to school with only butter, margarine in their bread. In this town, from all the wealth, all the high position, it had pleased the Lord to bring us to in Africa. We came here having to run into train, having to run into bus, having to go, having to walk, having to do things, having to lack, all those stuff. But you know what? We sowed it as a seed into what the Lord wants to do. When people see this work expanding, enlarging, you know what to know? It was through the fire. Because out of the death of one, or out of the broken seed, is their multiplication. Many people are not productive in ministry because they don't want to die. They don't want that inconvenience. People are three years in ministry. They want to get this. They want to get that. They want to buy that car. They want to compete with those who have been 25, 30 years in ministry. And they put so much pressure on the people that they are leading. Oh, except they come away for 100 grand and die in a bias alone. Brother, sister, if you have been called to ministry, if you embrace the sufferings that come with your calling, the Lord will use you to touch many lives. All those appointed to be touched through you, they will come to your veil. And brothers and sisters, that's why I want to ask you to know what the Lord is doing. This is the, this is, these are some of the keys to this commission. People don't know. Apostle Ron has been to our home. Teacher Stephanie, Pastor Janda, they beat your home. Apostle Brenda, they know how it is so ordinary, so simple. So this thing, we live rustic life, just simple, uncomplicated, no sophistication. Why? It's a deliberate choice that, Lord, have your way. It doesn't matter how far, as long as you are glorified. That way, the Lord helps us not to be on a parachute. Our feet is firmly on the ground. We can go anywhere. We can preach on the streets anywhere. When we go on mission, people wonder how we go out to market to preach, on the road to preach and order because we have allowed what we have gone through to give us the grace of simplicity, the grace to be real, the grace to be ordinary, the grace to be vulnerable, the grace to people to come and see how much, you know, how we simple and ordinary, yet it has pleased the Lord that every day, through Facebook Live, we touch lives of those, and some people, the testimony they give us, the Lord truly is using this to change lives and transform lives. Through this, the Lord is doing the master class, training up manpower worldwide. Through this global school of ministry, hundreds of people are ordained every year. Manpower is added to the kingdom. And by the grace of the Lord, the Lord has added TBN Africa on DSTV channel 343. I want to encourage you, every Thursday, if you are in London, 4.30 p.m., if you're in South Africa, 6.30 p.m., if you are in um, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., it, uh, it's 11.30 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. if you're in Central Time, every Thursday, go to DSTV, put on Google, DSTV Channel 343, TBN Africa. You see, through Kingdom Life, with Apostle George and Pastor Grace. You click on and be with us every Thursday like today. Every, also, by 12 midnight today, South African time, which is 10 p.m. UK time today, 10 p.m. today, there'll be a repeat broadcast. 
and that is 5 p.m. Eastern Time today also, and 4 p.m. today Central Time. Then on Friday, or I mean on Saturday, early morning, South African Time, 2.30 a.m., which is 12.30 London Time, midnight, 12, 30 minutes past midnight London on Friday. And that means for those in the Eastern Time Zone, 12.30 p.m. Friday. And those in the Central Time Zone, zone 6.30 p.m. Friday, True Kingdom Live on DSTV Channel 343, DBN Africa. And then Saturday morning, Saturday morning, 6 a.m. South African Time, which is 4 a.m. London Time, which is 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Eastern Time and 10 p.m. You know, uh, um, Central Time on Friday. So this is quite a bunch. The Lord has blessed the body, the whole world, for the whole world. And that is what has come from our own suffering, the breaking. And is it true? Is the Lord true with us yet? No way. Like, no way is it true. We, is still, we are still working progress. But we say to you, it's a sweet journey. It's a sweet journey. Come along with us. I don't know what you're going through. There's a purpose. There's a divine purpose. It's for good. Don't ever fear what you are going through. That's what the Lord said to the church in Smyrna. You know, I remember very well, you know, that the Lord spoke to the church in Smyrna. Fear not. I mean, yeah, that's what he said in the book of Revelation 2 verse 10. He says, uh, uh, verse 9. I know thy works, tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast them into prisons, and you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Brothers and sisters, let us learn to embrace what we are going through. Dance through your fire. Embrace your fire. It will not destroy you. It will take away dross. It will take away impatience. It will take away all the fleshly things that come in out of us. All the murmuring. The day will come when you not murmur in the midst of what you are going through. You'll be praising Elohim. You'll be giving him glory. Aim to get there. Put that as a goal. Say to yourself, this February will not pass me by. I will get there. Where will I go through? What brings pain shall not bring mama. What brings pain shall bring praise. What brings pain shall bring well, joy. Joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord should not be anything that has to do with happiness. Happiness leads to happiness. And that's what many people aim for. But when you have the joy of the Lord, you can go through any situation with that inner state of knowing that the Lord is for you. And if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? We're going to pray right now. And then we'll take announcements. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Let Holy Spirit do a work with this world. Father, let Holy Spirit do a deep work. Let these words not depart from your people. Let it latch into their heart. Let it latch into their mind. Renewing the mind. Transforming the heart. Bringing forth the glory of the new creation. The glory of the Father in them, O oh Lord. Do it for your name's sake. All of us, we need you. We ask you, bring us to that place where murmur and lashing out and all those terrible fleshly things get out of our lives and where what you are doing, perfect it. Bring us to the place. Make us to be like the son who is the example you have set before us. That will be like Yeshua, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And then he sat down at your right hand. Help us to remember that after we have suffered a while through our suffering, you make us perfect. You establish us. You strengthen us. You settle us. Let this be the experience of everyone who has watched this program today. And help your people to distribute this truth to their friends and relatives. Not only on Facebook, but by email. That those who will even take it on to CD, dub it into a DVD, and send it to people they know going through. Let your name be glorified. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord has done something today. And if the Lord has touched you and done something, why not send me your pastor grace 
the world to let us know. Do you need extra attention? Yesterday we had attention with somebody who was so touched with the world and we spent at least 20 minutes talking, encouraging, counseling. You know what? We're available. We're available. That's why we're here. That's our full-time job. It's for the remnant to be ready for the return of the Lord. And so we're going to take some announcement. Uh, Pastor Jeremiah Ebuche, his junior brother, passed on. Today will be service of songs. If you're in the London area, please join with us, uh, meet with us at uh, 821 Old Control, the Redeemer Assembly Trust by 7 p.m. for a three-hour service of songs. Brother, his brother Ose was a pastor the Lord used for revival in Nigeria mightily. He passed on with, uh, left a widow and a daughter. And so we want you also to encourage Pastor Jeremy and Pastor Lizzie. May the Lord strengthen them. May the Lord be, be with them. May the Lord comfort them and may be well with them. And may the family be protected and preserved in Yeshua's name. Amen. Um, uh, at the 2020 Masterclass, please, brethren, there's been a low level relative to some years before. Please tell people who need to be part of this nine months program, either through the classroom on Facebook or through, you know, the Yes course or through YouTube, any way that you please, or to read e-books and they will have mentors. You know what? Go to www.kingdombooksclub.com, fill the form. Talk about the module that works for you. The best way to do your training. Nine months from March will begin, end in December. And you know what? The Lord is available to do you good and tell other people. A few bad days today. We have our sister Tayo Lani in South Africa and Leah M. Hall in the U.S. and Tina Anders in the U.S. Bubu Sebisa uh, and then Apostle Brent Edwards, Charles Mokosa and Jonas Rabuli. And also, um, La Homa Wella Man, their bad days are today. We're going to pray for them. And they will thank you, Destiny. May the Lord bless you.